Hey everyone. Okay, so yeah, the episode starts off by following the events of last week's episode where Rebecca, while no longer in a cell, could argue is still lives as Joe's prisoner, eventually leading to the true nature of her powers awakening. And before I get into Rebecca's powers, can I just say I absolutely loved how this episode really leaned into the true despair and absolute hopelessness Rebecca was feeling leading up to her powers awakening. Like, it just made that that her moment of finally awakening her powers and using them to, t like, to travel back, like, to travel backwards, like, and just fit to when this whole thing started all the more hopeful. At least to me it did. Um, with, but, yeah, with that said, though, yes, let's talk about her powers. And, yeah, if you need a full context of how her powers work, go watch my review of last week's episode. But to kind of simplify my explanation from last week, you can think of Rebecca's abilities as if Mashma took the logistics of a Future Trunks-style time travel, the DBZ era, not super, and made it into a power. So it's less that she's travel turning back time and more creating an entirely new timeline, one where... <clears throat> Shiki is alive. And to push the idea forward, consider, if you will, what Joe called Rebecca in episode 5 and even what she, what she calls her, what, what he calls her at the end of this episode. Number 29 and number 30. Meaning, whatever happens in this new timeline, it doesn't and won't affect events that have come before or will happen in the future. So as far as, like, the Shiki of the past, the one that got shot by Dragon Joe, that still happened, except now it exists within a sort of pocket timeline, I guess you could say, that's existing in this weird limbo space that Rebecca is no longer a part of. Again, I, I, I'll, I said this before last week, I'll say it here again, Noah will kind of get more in-depth with the explanation of what her power is than I can, but the base explanation of what her... but what I just told you is the base explanation of her power. It's basically Future Trunks time travel if you made that shit into a power. And yeah, that's what Rebecca is. With that said, yeah, obviously once Rebecca uses her powers and is reunited with everyone, she basically explains the situation to them. Leading to the end of the episode where Shiki comes up with the brilliant idea of just charging full force into Draken's base of operations using the Eden Zero as a battering ram. And yeah, obviously obviously it's a reckless move, full stop, that is just as likely to get them killed as the previous attempt. But I like how there's a little bit more credence to it in how we know what happened in the previous timeline. Joe managed to outmaneuver the Eden Zero crew at every turn, so what's so in that sense you can already say that the whole idea of like of of just Sneaking around trying to gather reconnaissance. That's kind of Bob gets at this point. So what's the best? So what's the best way to take someone like that off guard do something that they won't expect and With as and I guess with as calculating and methodical as Joe has proven to be doing something this crazy would kind of make the most sense because the because because it's the one thing he doesn't expect probably most of his enemies to do like he expects I, th I think Joe is kind of one of those people who expects his uh, his opponents to like to take them on, take them on, take him on in a in a in an equal battle of minds and chess and whatnot of mental chess. But this time it's like, nah, motherfucker, we're just gonna crash through your we're just we're just gonna crash through your front door. <laughs> Which yeah, I kind of like. Uh, I also like how right out of the gate after Draken's men invade, we already see instances of how Rebecca is taken taking advantage of her knowledge of this timeline by outing all three of the of the abilities dragons men have and dragons men have and just following that like we 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 see that and just following up with that as well with knowing that knowledge we 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 see we see hermit pretty much taking taking the initiative in order to stop in order to, in order to stop Seth's, Seth's ability to hack the system like it's it's just these little things that really make the biggest difference in in terms of the decision decisions made in this new kind of in, in this second outing of in this second outing in order to, to defeat Joe um, and Ivory even takes the initiative herself as when Rebecca talks about the element four and mentions Jin working with clean she outright interrogates Moscow about it that there's someone Jin seems wants wants wants, wants to heal and needs sisters help to do it which pseudo spoiler I guess it is clean but I won't spoil what what that is because where my because where Mashima takes this plot thread in the future is kind of fucked up. Like, 
I know, I know this is like, I know the whole time travel thing is going to be a bump in the road for a lot of people, but trust me, where Mushman takes a lot of the stuff, a lot of the story going forward, even beyond this point, is really fucked up. Like, it's, yeah. Um, now, I do admit, within the technical aspects of how the anime adapted the, the, the whole meeting among the crew, there are a couple areas where the anime cut a few corners that I would have liked to see adapted. And it's not, and honestly, for the most part, it's still, they still really did a good job with it. But for me, I guess it's one of those things where one of the things I would have liked to see adapted is, is, is just some goofy little diagrams that Mashima, that Mashima had used in the manga as visual guides in order to explain things. I would have liked to see that, see that stuff added, but I guess the anime wanted to play it a little more straight. Also, I'm not gonna lie. I'm a little surprised they managed to make this episode work the way they did. When when you get because when you get down to it, the whole meeting among the crew isn't even that long. So knowing that so knowing that, I expected them to have adapted much more than what we got. But when looking at how the episode ends, I understand why they did it in this way. But also, again, how how they did make this episode work is kind of incredible to me because nor normally in episodes like this where it's just a conversation it can be very boring or the pacing can be slow but honestly i think because of just how the personalities of the character these characters work off each other it just makes even the most mundane of situations like the crew meet like the crew's meeting even kind of just more engaging and yeah how they handled the moment of Eden Zero crashing through Belial Gore was pretty damn epic despite the CGI of the ship which the, the, I will admit the anime is actually making that aspect of the show which I originally didn't like a little bit better than I thought like the, they're, they're using the CGI kind of better than, than how I expected they w would normally but um yeah guys that's, but, yeah, guys, honestly, that, that's really all I've got for this episode. There wasn't really a whole lot to talk about this week, as, it, again, it just, it was mostly just the conversation around, around the meeting table, but it's, one of the big things to, is, I guess one of the, one thing I will leave you guys off on is from this point on, pay attention to the small little details that happen in the future, because it is one of those, one of those things that, that is going to define how things are different for, in this timeline from how they used to be before. But, uh, yeah, guys, that's pretty much all I got for this for you. If you enjoyed the video, like, comment, subscribe, follow me on Twitter, and Elise Crunchyroll. Be sure to the notification bell, subscribe button, and just share the video around, guys. Dark Knight of Enemy signing off. Later, everyone.